morning, everyone. My name is Don Kowalski. I'm the chair of the physical therapy department. And on behalf of the faculty and staff, we're delighted that you're here to participate in this wonderful event. Friends, family, most of all, class of 2010, I'd like to thank you for coming tonight to celebrate this magnificent occasion. A culmination of six years, countless hours of studying, hundreds of exams, lots of tears, lots of smiles, sadness, happiness, tremendous number of memories that you'll remember the rest of your lives. I'm grateful and proud for the opportunity to be with all of you on this special night. Before we begin, I would like to announce the platform party. President John Leahy apologizes. He was unable to come tonight. He wishes you the very best, and we'll see you tomorrow at graduation. On the platform party, seated to the far right of the platform, is Betsy Smith, Associate Dean of the School of Health Sciences Center, Dr. Edward O'Connor, Dean of the School of, of Health Sciences, and next to Ed O'Connor is Mark Thompson, who's the, let me get this title right, Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. We're delighted to have them with us. Also, I would like to also introduce a special group of people that without their help, this day would not be possible. And I'd like to introduce the faculty. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced and standing. Dr. Russ Woodman, Professor Edward Tantorski, Dr. Michelle Brogy, Professor Tracy Wall, Dr. Harris, <laughs> Doc, Dr. Koch, Lori Lacaria, Dr. Maureen Helgren, and Dr. Cameron. Please. I'm very blessed to have uh, a wonderful group of faculty uh, to work with. Um, they love you dearly, they work very hard for you, and I couldn't ask for a better situation. What I'd like to do is actually start out by giving you one more lecture. <laughs> it's not gonna be as complicated as electrotherapy, I promise. I'll try to reflect on my past experiences and see if I can give you some advice as you head out into this professional world that you're about to enter. As I've probably told you and some of you may have forgotten, I too am a Quinnipiac graduate. 33 years ago, I was where you are today. Many things are different. The campus is completely different. Um, However, despite all the differences, I probably had the exact same apprehensions you have right now, and I was experiencing them 33 years ago. Your mind is filled with questions about what you're going to be encountering during your years after Quinnipiac. I'm here tonight to encourage you to take advantage of the wonderful opportunities you've been provided and try to reflect on my experiences and try to give you some advice. Hopefully, it will help you. As you're aware, having the opportunity to attend college and graduate school is a privilege. For some, you represent the first generation in your family to ever have the experience to participate in college. During the years to come, your education will provide you with countless opportunities. Not only the opportunity to provide excellent health care for your patients, which I know you will all do, as you're extremely well prepared, but you also have many opportunities that require you to make choices and the choices you make will not always be easy. There will be many questions to ask of yourselves and the answers are not going to be simple. I believe that in each of us, there's a unique ability to find the right answers for the many questions that we're going to have. We all have the ability, but we don't always use it wisely. I know I didn't always use it wisely when I was younger. Some call it turning to our subconscious. Some call it turning to higher power. We must try to blend our experiences with this unique ability to do the very best that we can and make the best choices with our lives. There's a, person, a tremendous personal responsibility for making choices 
that your new opportunity will demand. The personal responsibility to make choices is a very frightening experience. It's ironic that while great sacrifices have been made for personal responsibility, many of us fear it. It's easy to refrain from making choices. You can easily sit back and allow others to make choices for you. What you'll soon find is that you'll have an endless supply of sources for which you can place blame when you experience failure. You will blame your boss or the leadership style or your poor interest on your poor interest in uh, commitment and ultimately your dissatisfaction at work. Or you can blame your friends for pressuring you into poor decisions. You'll always be able to find people that sh will suggest what you should be doing. However, no one is going to be willing to accept the responsibility for your mistakes. That responsibility belongs to you. Edwin Fulner, president of the Heritage Foundation, states that once an individual becomes fearful of personal responsibility, everything becomes a matter of rights, entitlements, or blame to the detriment of others and to the abandonment of the individual's accountability for his own life. A result unachieved becomes a right denied. A desire unfulfilled becomes an entitlement due. It's a terrible, debilitating curse to live your life uh, to live your life more concerned about your rights than your opportunities, more preoccupied with what is owed you rather than what you owe others, more absorbed with placing blame than in accepting responsibilities. If you rely on others to make your choices, even your apparent successes will not be felt as your own, but will instead be attributed to somebody else. Without taking responsibility for your own choices, you will gain nothing and your education and opportunity it presents will be wasted. A graduate of Columbia University once took his alma mater to court for reimbursement of his tuition. Please don't do that. <laughs> he argued that he had not gained wisdom as was, as was cited on an inscription across the top of one of the campus buildings. The student stated that he had attended all his classes, passed all his courses, earned his diploma, but he felt he had not attained wisdom. A court decision concluded that it was responsibility to the university to dispense knowledge, not wisdom. Knowledge was a fruit of books and lectures. Wisdom, it was decided, was a result of one's own efforts and choices, which had to be acquired individually. Quinnipiac University and its faculty have provided you with a commitment of time and experience to help you attain knowledge. What you must understand is that your ability to benefit from your educational experience and the opportunities it provides is not going to be developed by some mystical, magical powers from your supervisors, your coworkers, or colleagues. You must be willing to participate in your career development and in your ability to provide happiness to your patients and ultimately be happy and fulfilled yourselves. You must be willing to exercise your opportunity to make choices and you must be willing to accept the responsibility for those choices. I have stressed your need to make choices, and you may be wondering, how do I go about doing this? I advise you to strive to make your choices based on the enduring values that were instilled upon you by your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, your friends, neighbors, and anyone else who loved you and cared about you. You have spent a great deal of time in your lives learning right from wrong. Don't be afraid of your beliefs and your convictions. They're the foundation that defines each of you. Edward Sanifor states that one should opt for a philosophy of life that is based on a value system which emphasizes pride in oneself and one's identity, respect and consideration for others, fair play, honesty, integrity, truth, and love. These are the bases by which we should make our choices. You also develop your value system when you gather and analyze information. Be assertive in your quest for this information. Try to gain an understanding of situations and answers to your questions by utilizing the resources available to you in this wonderful information age. Learn to communicate with those around you. Involve yourself in professional organizations and professional environments. Get involved in prof uh, professional and patient advocacy groups about you. You must also be willing to take a chance to risk failure in pursuit of success. If you believe in yourself and trust your decisions, your failures will be viewed as part of the right of passage to bigger and better things. Learn to view failure as part of the normal process of dealing with your world. Realize that everyone who's failed 
at some time in their life. No one remembers the number 1,019, but most remember the number 745. Hank Aaron hit 745 home runs, but he also struck out 1,019 times. Did you know Albert Einstein failed his college entrance exams? His teacher said Albert is a very poor student. He is mentally slow, unsociable, and is always daydreaming. He is spoiling it for the rest of the class. It would be in the best interest of all if he were removed from school at once. Don't fear failure. Learn to accept the possibility of failure without losing your sense of self-worth. Your failure will not hurt your self-esteem. Only feeling like a failure will. Don't fear the future. Take your risks and make your choices. Try to remember that life is an opportunity to change. If you make choices based on sound information and solid values, you'll change for the better. Don't fear change. I'd like to leave you with one last thought tonight, which is give something back. There are those around us who can only take and can never get enough, even though they feel convinced that if they could, they'd be a little bit happier. There's an old saying, you cannot help yourself without helping somebody, you cannot help somebody else without helping yourself in return. You've all experienced this good feeling in your lives. And it's probably one of the reasons you decided to enter the profession of physical therapy. My challenge to you is to learn how to help others on a grander scale by applying the knowledge you've learned and gained at Quinnipiac. What influence will you have not only on your patients, but on the world? The challenges that we face are overwhelming. Homelessness, poverty in society, world hunger, violence, drugs, abuse of our environment, hatred, racial intolerances, disease, and war. You can make a difference. Vince Lombardi, the former great coach of the Green Bay Packers, had this message to give his team after the cheers of the empty stadium had been finished. After the headlines have been written and after you're back in the quiet of your room and all the pomp and fanfare has faded, the enduring things that are left are dedication to excellence, dedication to victory, and the dedication to doing with our lives the very best we can to make the world a better place. Tomorrow when you receive your diploma, and all the pomp and fanfare has faded, you will be prepared for the future. Class of 2010, on behalf of the faculty and staff, I am honored to have been part of your professional development, and we hope that we've provided you with a preparation for success for the rest of your lives. The rest is up to you. Have a wonderful career, and may God bless you with much happiness. Thank you. I would like to introduce Dr. Mark Thompson, who will be saying some words um, in President Leahy's absence. Dr. Thompson. Thank you and welcome on behalf of Quinnipiac University. And it's a pleasure to be here at this evening's uh, hooding ceremony and congratulations to all of you on finishing up uh, your program. So tomorrow is commencement. Are you excited? Looking forward to it? I'm sure you are. You know the commencement signals what is a beginning, not an end. And for you, commencement signifies the beginning of what I'm convinced will be a highly successful career for all of you. I'm convinced of this because of several indicators that tell me that you are well prepared to go into your chosen field. One of the indicators is you certainly demonstrated that you're highly capable people through your high academic achievement. You successfully completed what is a rigorous course of study. Is that true? Not for the faint-hearted, right? You've not only done well academically, but you have significant accomplishments in the service to others, and I think that says quite a bit about your personal character. You're also following in the footsteps of, of our PT alumni who are regarded as the very best in their field. I can't tell you how many times that I have the pleasure of speaking to employers of our graduates who tell me that they are, in fact, better than any other. 
And I can tell you that if I'm ever in the need of the services of a physical therapist, I will insist that it be one that was trained at Quinnipiac University. You can count on that. So I know that you'll be regarded as the very best in your field. You've also benefited from the university's commitment to provide you the resources and the facilities necessary to ensure that you're receiving the very highest quality educational experience. And I hope that you enjoyed your one year in the new facilities in North Haven. Um, and as a result of the tireless efforts of the faculty and the School of Health Sciences Administration, you're graduating from what is a nationally recognized program. I'd like to take a second to thank Ed O'Connor, the Dean of the School of Health Sciences, and Betsy Smith, the Associate Dean of the School, for their leadership. And I want to ask them actually both to stand for a moment, give you the opportunity to say thank you for all that they've done. One of the primary reasons we do have a nationally recognized program of excellence in physical therapy is because of the faculty and their ongoing commitment to student achievement. They do a tremendous number of different things to ensure that, in fact, that you are well prepared. So I, again, like to thank them for all that they've done and ask you to stand one more time to be recognized. And in particular, I want to thank Don Kowalski, who's the chair of the physical therapy department. Uh, Don is a strong advocate for the program, and his efforts in support of faculty and students have no doubt contributed to the quality of the program. And I'd ask that Don stand and give us the chance to say thank you. So if you take all of these factors together, your own accomplishments and all of the other things that have contributed uh, to your educational experience thus far, I am absolutely convinced that you will be successful once you leave us. So you know that you're embarking on a career that has associated with it tremendous responsibility. And I ask that you not only continue to do well, but continue to do good. The combination of your academic preparedness, commitment to excellence, and willingness to serve others will certainly have a positive and significant impact on the lives of the many folks that you'll serve and come in contact with. So I congratulate all of you and wish you the very best. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the School of Health Sciences, Dr. Edward O'Connor. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. First of all, let me extend my sincere congratulations to the class of 2010, our graduating doctors. Congratulations. I commend you on successful completion of the physical therapy program. I know you have some more clinical training left and a little, t a little test you have to take at the end of all this, right? Yeah, that's right, so you gotta keep that in mind. But this evening's hooding ceremony recognizes your accomplishments and marks your acceptance into the profession of physical therapy. You should be extremely proud of this achievement and know that the university and the faculty are very proud of you as well. I will keep my comments brief tonight. As Henry VIII said to his many wives, I won't keep you long. <laughs> However, I would like to share with you a few thoughts and one or two short pieces of advice. First question, what does the doctoral degree mean to you? What does it mean to be called doctor? Many of you probably know the origin of the word. Doctor comes from the Latin, docere, to teach. The earliest use of the word doctor in written English can be tracked back to 1303, where the term was first applied to doctors of the church, meaning learned men in the scriptures, teachers of the scripture. It was not until 100 years later that it was used in the sense of a medical doctor or one who treats illnesses or diseases. I ask that you reflect upon the word doctor for a moment. By accepting this doctoral hood tonight, all 44 of you have agreed, you, all 44 of you have earned the title doctor, but much more importantly, you have agreed to become a teacher. You have signed a pact with other doctors and pledged to a commitment of lifelong learning, and perhaps even more significant, to share your knowledge, to pass it on to others, to teach. Some of you may view the doctoral degree as an end. I know you and your parents are hoping this is the end of the Quinnipiac tuition bills, right? You're looking. <laughs> but like many things in life, what is often perceived as the end is truly just the beginning. 
I ask that you think of today as a new beginning. Attaining a black belt in the martial arts is often seen as a culmination or pinnacle of achievement. For those of you who had studied the martial arts or reached similar achievements in other areas, you would know that the black belt, black belt signifies not the end, but just the beginning. It signifies that the student has learned enough to begin to learn. I believe this to be true of the doctoral degree as well. Approximately 15 years ago, I was privileged to give the commencement address to my fellow graduates at my doctoral commencement ceremony. I was looking through my old notes and I spoke of how our doctoral degrees signified that we almost begin the journey of self-discovery. The doctoral degree beckons you to go back to the beginning of your learning and examine what you know, or what you think you know, with a keener, more educated eye. It asks you to look for answers in the noise or the subtleties of the problem, to dig deeper into things that others have taken for granted, to pursue the answers with due diligence. Socrates, truly one of the great thinkers and teachers of old, shares a thought with one of the great thinkers of our time, a man consumed by contemplative thought. Uncle Ben Parker from the Spider-Man movies. He said, with great power comes great responsibility. The title doctor does carry great power and with it great responsibility. People will talk to you differently. Your patients will act a little differently around you. They will give you the benefit of respect, but that is something you will ultimately have to earn from them. However, they will expect much in return. We are all consumers of healthcare, every single person in this room. And we all share something in common. We expect outstanding health care. Your future patients will expect outstanding care. They will presume that you will be able to heal them, to ease their pain, to treat them with dignity and respect, to include them in their health care plan, and most importantly, listen to them. With great power comes great responsibility. Two short pieces of advice. Stay involved in your community. Very shortly, you'll be entering the real world. You'll find a job and choose a community in which to live. As students, you've done amazing work for the communities we know as Quinnipiac University, Hamden, Connecticut, and the world. Continue to contribute and be part of your future communities. And two, my favorite mantra, luck favors the prepared mind. Continue to work hard and prepare yourself for opportunities that may come your way. This is a special evening, your evening. But as always, I hope you take the time to reflect on and acknowledge all the people that have helped you along the way so far, and to those that will continue to guide and support you on your journey through your personal and professional life. Just look around this room and you will see them. They are your parents and other family members, your fellow classmates, the faculty, and all the other support systems that you have developed to be successful. Make sure to take some time to thank them this evening as well. Doctor of Physical Therapy class of 2010, congratulations. I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. I am confident that you will make excellent clinicians and perhaps some outstanding faculty and clinical preceptors for us in the future. So when Marie calls you, just say, yes, I'll take a student, right? <laughs> Our best wishes for success in your future endeavors. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean O'Connor. Before we proceed with the hooding, I want to do one last thank you, because I will get caught up in the moment as we start to continue, and I will forget. So you've heard me many times mention that working with Angela Skyers to get the hooding ceremony together. Uh, Dr. Angela Skyers, could you please stand for us? <laughs> Dr. Angela Skyers is director of programming. Uh, assistant to her is Nareda Soto. Nareda, if you could please stand if you're here. Okay, and <laughs> I guess she thought you were going to do it all, Angela. And last is Gina Frank. Dr. Frank, please stand. You're recognized. 
What we're now going to do is, is a moment you've been waiting for for a long time, is you're going to hear your name called Dr. So-and-so. <laughs> for the parents out there, I want you to realize what this has taken. Six years of tremendous amount of work. The title of doctor does not come easily. And uh, you should be very, very proud, as we all are. OK. Meredith, if you could proceed. Our first candidate comes to us from Oxford, Connecticut. Meredith Ann Bagley. Dr. Meredith Ann Bagley. Our next candidate from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, is Amanda Rose Blanchett. Dr. Amanda Rose Blanchett. The next candidate from Mount Sinai, New York, is Greg Byers. <laughs> Dr. Greg Byers. Our next candidate from Wyoming, Rhode Island, Kristen Lauren Carlson. <laughs> Dr. Kristen Lauren Carlson. Our next candidate from Farmington, Maine, Sarah Catherine Carter. Dr. Sarah Catherine Carter. Our next candidate from Essex Falls, New Jersey, Matthew Alberto Cefeli. Dr. Matthew Alberto Cefeli. Our next candidate from Beck Hill, Connecticut, Rocky Hill, Connecticut, is Ashley Cowles. <laughs> Dr. Ashley Cowles. Next candidate from Auburn, New Hampshire, Megan Ann Doherty. Dr. Megan Ann Doherty. The next candidate, Albertson, New York, Jane Catherine Dumas. Dr. Jane Catherine Dumas. Next candidate from Ledyard, Connecticut, Patrick David Edgecombe. <laughs> Dr. Patrick David Edgecombe. Our next candidate from Hackettstown, New Jersey, Laura Elizabeth Evans.
Dr. Laura Elizabeth Evans. Our next candidate from Pompton Plains, New Jersey, Shannon Eileen Ferguson. Dr. Shannon Eileen Ferguson. Next candidate from Silver Spring, Maryland, Carly Ann Funk. <laughs> Dr. Carly Ann Funk. Next candidate from Vernon, New Jersey, Ashley Nicole Gola. Dr. Ashley Nicole Gola. Next candidate from Meredith, New Hampshire, Abigail Lee Gosling. Dr. Abigail Lee Gosling. Next candidate from Garden City, South New York, James Vincent Gottlieb, Jr. Dr. James Vincent Gottlieb, Jr. Next candidate from Schwanksville, Pennsylvania, Jennifer Lynn Hirsch. Dr. Jennifer Lynn Hirsch. Next candidate from Barrington, Rhode Island, Ann Catherine Hunt. Dr. Ann Catherine Hunt. Next candidate from Asbury, New Jersey, James L. Kelly, Jr. Dr. James Kelly, Jr. Next candidate from Mattertuck, New York, Sarah Jean King. Dr. Sarah Jean King. Next candidate from Uxbridge, Mass. is Kimberly McDougall. Dr. Kimberly McDougall. Next candidate from Bricktown, New Jersey, Kelly Ann Masterson. Dr. Kelly Ann Masterson. Next candidate from Clark's Greens, Pennsylvania, Courtney Lynn McGraw. Dr. Courtney Lynn McGraw. Next candidate from Warwick, Rhode Island, Patricia Eileen Megan. Dr. Patricia Eileen Megan. Next candidate from Wakefield, Rhode Island, 
Julie Burroughs Mello. Dr. Julie Burroughs Mello. Next candidate from Southampton, New York, Brian Jake Marangola. Dr. Brian Jake Marangola. Next candidate from Mount Sinai, New York, Tyler J. Myers. Dr. Tyler Myers. Next candidate from Warwick, New York, Matthew John Perillo. Dr. Matthew John Perillo. Next candidate from Newington, Connecticut, Mary Pease. Dr. Mary Pease. Next candidate from Berlin, Connecticut, Michael Christopher Pindar. Dr. Michael Christopher Pindar. Next candidate from Harwich, Mass, Danielle Eileen Patera. <laughs> Dr. Danielle Eileen Patera. Next candidate from Valley Stream, New York, Amanda Christina Presland. Dr. Amanda Christina Presland. Next candidate from Marion Station, Pennsylvania, Dorian Eva Prince. Dr. Dorian Eva Prince. Next candidate from Wilmington, Mass. Rachel Ann C. <laughs> Dr. Rachel Ann C. Next candidate from North Brunswick, New Jersey, Jacqueline Mary Smith. Dr. Jacqueline Mary Smith. Next candidate from Edison, New Jersey, Lauren Julia Soltis. Lauren Julia, Dr. Lauren Julia Soltis. Next candidate from Salisbury, New Hampshire, Emily Carroll Sprague. <laughs> Dr. Emily Carroll Sprague. 
Next candidate from Glenhead, New York, Christy Marie Swisbin. <laughs> Dr. Christy Marie Swisbin. Next candidate from Smithfield, Rhode Island, Ryan Tower. Dr. Ryan Tower. Next candidate from Manchester, Connecticut, Caitlin Elizabeth Tracy. Dr. Caitlin Elizabeth Tracy. Next candidate from Edison, New Jersey, Catherine Marie Err. <laughs> Dr. Catherine Marie Err. Next candidate from Walden, New York, Elizabeth Meredy, Meredith Uzinski. Lindsay Meredith Uzinski. I'll get the important part right. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay Meredith Uzinski. Next candidate from Webster, Mass., Cassandra Marie Ward. Dr. Cassandra Marie Ward. And our last candidate from Elmhurst, New Jersey, Emily Chirk Yin Wong. Dr. Emily Chirk Yin Wong. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for your doctoral graduates. I told you, you might cry. <laughs> Class, if you could stand and take your doctoral oaths at the back of the program. The doctoral oath was created in 19, uh, 2009 by Jennifer Verga and Jennifer Zaleski. It was adapted from the modern Hippocratic Oath of the American Medical Association and the American Physical Therapy Association's professional core values. And would like to begin your career by reciting the oath. I will observe the profession's defined core values.
Thank you. Please be seated. Next in the program will be the student farewell address. And I'd like to welcome Sarah King to the podium. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah King. Um, on behalf of our class, I would like to thank all of our families for coming to support us. We have formed our own family here at Quinnipiac, and it's so nice to be able to meet each other's families. It's been a long journey here at Quinnipiac, and I don't think any of us could have done it without the support of our families. I would also like to wish all of our mothers a happy Mother's Day tomorrow. I know we did manage to take over the one day you have a year. <laughs> Um, I wanted to thank my class for picking me to give our farewell speech. <laughs> this is going to be a little hard. <laughs> um, you all mean so much to me, and I'm honored that you chose me. My first few years at Quinnipiac, I didn't have that many physical therapy friends, but that quickly changed junior year. I remember our first week of classes. At the time, we were split in half by the alphabet. We spent all week following each other to every class with the same exact people sitting in the same exact seats. <laughs> By the end of the week, one of our classmates looked around the room and said, man, am I going to hate all of you. <laughs> it was true. We were going to be spending a lot of time together, but I don't think I could have asked for a better group of people to spend my time with. Junior year turned out to be a real change for most of us. We had to study and work hard, and we didn't have art and music to cushion our schedule. We began spending all week together in classes, and it just came naturally that we spent our weekends together also. Getting through the first semester of junior year was huge, and we were all ready for winter break. I remember coming back to school. I wasn't ready for the workload, but I was ready to get back and see all of you. Four days after returning to Quinnipiac, I got a phone call from my mom that my dermatologist had called, and the spot that was removed from my back was melanoma, and it had to be treated. As all of us have been sick at school, you can understand that you just want to be home. You want to have your mom there taking care of you and spoiling you. But that wasn't possible. My, schedule, my surgery was scheduled for March, and it was now January. And I knew these next few months were going to be long. What I did, didn't know was that this semester, I was going to realize that I had a new family at Quinnipiac. Immediately, all of my professors and classmates came together to support me. We were still split by the alphabet, so half the class I barely even knew. <laughs> but I was overwhelmed by comforting support from my classmates. Even though not all of you know this, you helped me get through it, even by just being yourselves and taking my mind off of it. A year later, I was able to be the team leader of Relay for Life at Quinnipiac, where some of these same people were there to support me as I celebrated being melanoma-free for a year. Junior year re made me realize that this is more than just getting a degree. I made lifelong friends. We've worked hard to get where we are today. We, we also did a pretty good job at partying hard, too. <laughs> we found out that the PT party was all about as we found ourselves playing beer pong with Ed <laughs> and dancing on the dance floor with Denise. <laughs> we got through finals week knowing that at the end, 61 Pond Hill was going to have a theme party that consisted of ugly sweaters or jock jams or maybe even inappropriate t-shirts. <laughs> we look forward to getting everyone together. All of you know my love for dancing. <laughs> this year for my birthday, I said that I wanted to get everyone together for a dance circle. A few days following my birthday, following our long-awaited capstone projects, we started what I believe was Side Street's biggest dance circle. <laughs> We know each other way too well. We know who's going to be first to class and knew, who needs to wait until the professor begins class to struggle in. I'm glad Christy got here on time today. <laughs> we know where everyone's informal assigned seats are and we know not to mess with them. We know who asks the questions and who chooses to never speak. 
We know who gives the presentations that last forever. <laughs> and we also know who can't wait to get their presentations over with. We know who insists on going to the bathroom at least once every class. <laughs> and we also know that it may be because that person insists on carrying a gallon of water with him. <laughs> I truly consider all of you my family here. Yes, I may have more brothers beating on me and giving me a hard time than I'd ever asked for, but I wouldn't change any of it. While we were here at Quinnipiac, we earned our degrees, but we also did a lot more. Six years ago, 12 of us left New York, eight of us left New Jersey, five left Rhode Island, four left New Hampshire, four left Massachusetts, three left Pennsylvania, one Maine, and one Maryland, and the comforts of home to begin our journey at Quinnipiac. 16 of us set up our new homes at Ledges, not knowing what to expect. 16 of us watched our Yankees lose in 04, while 17 of us celebrated the Red Sox victory by jumping in Hepatitis Creek <laughs> and starting a riot. <laughs> but don't worry, 16 of us were able to celebrate the Yankees' 27th World Series championship last year. 16 of us had our first May weekend living in Commons, and we finally understood what May weekend was all about. 14 of us started our adventures to Toad's freshman year, while 13 of us just couldn't let go and continued to go this year. <laughs> 11 of us trained to uh, do their first half or full marathon. Six people made the venture to Nicaragua and one to Colombia to help with the healing and education of what we've learned here. 18 of us participated in the Relay for Life at Quinnipiac over the years, raising thousands of dollars. 11 of us represented Quinnipiac and introduced the word for Pete. For back to back to back to back, physical therapy, student softball tournament champions. 10 of us made our, their way to Miami, two to San Diego and two to Valley Forge to represent Quinnipiac at the student conclave. Three of us have gotten engaged and are beginning to plan the next stage of life. But 43 of you have made an impact on my life. 43 of you have made a lifelong friend in me, and 43 of you have influenced who I am today. Now, 44 of us are leaving Quinnipiac, not only with our doctorate in physical therapy, but with a bond that cannot be explained and memories that will con continue long after we leave. Okay, so I was asked by quite a few of you if I would dance for my speech. <laughs> I jokingly said that I was going to start with Ellen DeGeneres and um, do a little dance party, but I figured instead I would teach our families the three dance moves that our class feels are most appropriate. So if you guys want to join in, you can, but it was three of them. First, it's just this. Second, and then we did third. Okay, um, thank you everyone, and I love you all. Thank you very much, Sarah. I learned some things I probably would prefer not to know. <laughs> and just for clarity, the Ed mentioned in the beer pong game was not our Dean Ed O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure you understand that. Uh, so your two most difficult tasks, you didn't know were going to occur tonight. Getting your hood on the right way, and then saying the oath in unison. <laughs> Both of which you did extremely well, so uh, congratulations on that. So congratulations, doctors, on all that you've accomplished, and I wish you the best. And I do want to say thank you, my, add my thanks to all the families and friends who have supported our graduates. I know that you don't support them uh, because you are seeking recognition for that, but I know that you support them because you care uh, very deeply for all of them, so I thank you for your support. So tomorrow's commencement weather prediction is partly sunny, that's good news, we'll be outside. It's going to struggle to get to 60 degrees, however, and the wind is gonna be about 40 miles an hour at some point, so get those bobby pins out for those of you who have hair that's long enough to use them. Uh, but no matter what the weather, I know that tomorrow is gonna to be a great day for all of us. I'm looking forward to being there with you. 
Following our ceremony, there is a reception, which is in the dining hall. If you go out these doors and turn left, you can't help but get to the dining hall. So I hope to see you all there. And again, congratulations to all of you. And good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.